Let's start a reading vlog. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, as you can see, today is the last day of the historical romance readathon vlog. And what actually happened was that I vlogged day two of the historical romance readathon, and then I just proceeded never to vlog ever again past those days. So I figured that I have to wrap up this vlog and I actually have to talk about the books that I read and actually talk about what I actually did throughout the week. Now, this readathon has been what I deem to be a personal failure for me, mostly because it's the worst readathon I've ever had um, since I started this channel and since I regularly participated in re readathons. I feel like this one I was just so unmotivated and I was just performing lower than expected for myself and also as compared to my other readathons. This is actually the third historical romance readathon that I hosted with my friends Jessica from Peace Love Books and Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers and each historical romance readathon I read more than seven books or more than like the fair share amount of books and mostly because I was just like motivated I wanted to crush it I wanted to crush my TBR but then for this readathon it just happened in such a weird time in my life where I just didn't feel like reading much historical romance and also because during my winter holidays um, when I was taking some time off at work and when the office was closed and things like that I actually binge read a lot of historical romance so I think that also played a factor into why I'm not reading as much mostly because I read a lot already in the past couple months so it wasn't like I needed to really quench my thirst for a duke or a scoundrel or a rogue. I recently got into classics which I haven't really talked much about here on this channel but I will discuss more about it in my future videos. Um, I'm not sure how many people are going to be actually interested in me like going in this classics journeys process but I figured that it's something that I want to document on my channel and hopefully you guys who actually like my content will find me falling into the classics community hole very entertaining and very enjoyable so much that you would actually watch those videos. But today is the last day and I don't feel like reading as much as I want to anymore. Um, today is actually kind of like a day break for me because of recent changes in my career. I decided to leave my current position and move on to another position. So now I just kind of have like a very short holiday before I start my new job and I don't feel like reading historical romance. And if I were to be really honest with you, um, I feel like I'm a failure as a host too as well, mostly because I wasn't as enthusiastic about it. Uh, like in terms of my own standards I wasn't really like amping up titles I wasn't really pushing out things sure I was like posting a lot of content throughout the week on this booktube channel and I was posting a lot of Instagram stories about like historical romance wrecks but I just feel like I my heart wasn't in it and therefore it kind of translated into me being like a really bad host for some reason so that's definitely something a lot to unpack there and it made me feel really guilty because I know that my friends were really like, super excited and they're still super excited to be hosting this readathon and partaking in it but with that being said I still really enjoyed my time during this readathon mostly because we had a lot of fun activities and we had a lot of fun events that I've never done before in other readathons including interviewing our favorite historical romance authors if you haven't watched it yet I actually interviewed Lorraine Heath on my Instagram channel and it was such a fun ride getting to know her and her writing process Lorraine Heath is definitely one of my favorite historical romance authors that I've come across in the last year and she's someone that I really advocate for you to look out for on shelves in your thrift stores or on your libraries because her books are just so complicated and they're just so juicy and dramatic. And then Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers interviewed our group reads author Joanna Shoup and that was really cool too. I unfortunately missed that live but you can catch up on these lives on our respective Instagram profiles. And then also Jessica from Peace Love Books um, she interviewed Kirigan Byrne and that one was hilarious. I find that Kirigan is so funny and so blunt most of the times so that I just loved that live so much. So I highly recommend you to check out everybody's lives. We all had our quirks and we ha all had our fun little instances. So anyways, because right now is around noon time, I actually just finished our group read, which is a Notorious Vow. And I don't foresee myself reading more historical romance tonight or today. Um, I'm in the middle of a Lorraine Heath novel right now and while I'm you know getting to know the story and kind of trying to enjoy it I just don't feel like that's going to be me. Um, quick fact about me is that yesterday I slept at 4 a.m. Why? 
because I took a two hour nap after work because I was sad and then I decided to stay up to 4 a.m. and then wake up at 9 a.m. because I needed to hand off like my uh, technology and my laptop and my cell phone that I had to give back to the old company that I worked for so I had to wake up early for that but now I'm so energetic so I don't think I'm gonna read any more historical romance for today and I think I'm just gonna look through other books that I want to read instead because I don't want like forcing myself to read books and then I'm gonna probably watch like a Marvel's Avengers movie mostly because I need to escape for a bit. So I find that like action movies and thriller movies really get me. So yeah. But we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna go back to past Lisa so she can discuss what happened on day two and then also give you a quick look at the new historical romance shelves that I have. Hi guys welcome back to the channel now as you can see I'm doing a very casual reading vlog with you guys. Today is day two of the historical romance readathon and unfortunately yesterday I kind of had an emergency that I had to take care of so I wasn't able to join everybody who went to do the HR readathon live and read along um, with Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers and from Jessica from Peace Love Books. I was supposed to be there but the emergency kind of took precedent and I had to you know take care of that before I could do anything else. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the readathon and finding everything to be really fun and very interesting. I just finished my Instagram live with Lorraine Heath, one of my favorite historical romance authors on my Instagram page. If you guys haven't followed me yet definitely go check it out there. I post stories all the time and I post photos every day. I'm more active there on my bookstagram page versus me being active here on my YouTube channel page. So um, a quick reading update is that this readathon is not one of the best readathons that I'm currently having with my friends right now. Usually by now during my readathons I'm usually well into my third book on day two. So like I really like to pack in as much as I can but um, unfortunately it's just a really busy time period for me in my life and also at work so I couldn't really read too much um, but the first book that I did finish reading is Jane in Love by Rachel Givney. This book came out last year in 2020 near the end of the year. It's about Jane Austen tr time traveling to the present time and her falling in love with someone in the present time and I thought that this would be a fun book to read. It's half historical romance half contemporary. Um, this book was something a little bit disappointing for me it ran a little bit slower than imagined. It was just, it wasn't as romantic as I thought it would be. So I only ended up giving this one a three out of five stars. I still really enjoyed the book. Instead of starting the historical romance readathon earlier and reading books ahead of the schedule, I decided to actually read classics. And I read Jane Eyre, I read Pride and Prejudice, I read Persuasion, I read Sense and Sensibility, and I absolutely fell in love with Jane Austen's writing. So that's why I really wanted to pick up this book as the first book to read in the Historical Romance Readathon. So yeah, so that's how my reading progress is going right now. I'm also currently reading a Mayo Rodell book right now. Um, I forgot the title of it. It's, I think, A Groom of One's Own. I freaking love Mayo Rodell. And and she is literally another one of my favorite historical romance authors that I really want people to read and to check out if you guys are following me. So I'm definitely going to be pushing her titles more. This one is kind of a love at first sight romance, but it's between a guy who's already engaged to a proper girl who's going to be the Duchess. And then afterwards, um, our female heroine is not proper because she kind of comes from a little bit of scandal and her job as a profession as a journalist is not that welcoming in society. So we're, I'm really enjoying it so far as I do with all Mayor Waddell's books. Um, for the rest of this afternoon, I still have to eat lunch. So I got some sushi that I'm really excited to eat. And then afterwards, um, I think I'm going to give you a quick tour of the new bookshelves. Well, the new setup for my bookshelves because my historical romance shelves have changed recently and I thought it'll be interesting to show you guys. Okay, so the last time I showed you guys my shelves, it was just really just this one main shelf here that was my historical romances, but then it since has expanded into another section. So this was actually my arcs shelves where I put my arcs on, but then arcs stopped being a thing. I didn't want the arcs there anymore. So I cleared it all up and I put all my historical romances there. And then this is kind of how like my desk situation looks like with my books here and like boxes and calendars. But let's get into more details of what each shelf 
means to me. So as you can see, this is my messy desk. This is where I do my work when I work from home. And this is actually the shelf where I'm, it's really in my level when I'm sitting and I can easily reach and grab a book. So during um, meetings <laughs> or during the workday when I'm a little bit bored or I'm a little bit distracted or I want to distract myself for a little bit, this is where the shelf I include all my favorite step backs and also my favorite back covers simply because I like to take them out and take a look at them, like maybe check it out to see how pretty the artwork is so I could admire it. So this is why I like to always keep my favorite step backs and my favorite back covers on this shelf. What also happened was that I kind of expanded into another area of section in another shelf because I bought more books and then afterwards I needed to, you know, put it on a shelf because I really like these covers. We can just start from the top. We got a Karen Rainey book right here that kind of looks really plain, but it's actually one of my favorite back covers because I really like red. And then we have our vintage Julia Quinn novels like Minx and then Splendid, and then we have some Lisa Clay passes that all have step backs, and we also have the Julia Quinn Bridgerton series that also all have step backs too as well. These books I found very cheap for $2 each. I'm very proud of myself for finding this lot, um, mostly because I know that these books can often sell really high on eBay. Lots of people just really like to scam people. So here's another step back that I just wanted to quickly show you. And this one's called Kathy Maxwell's Married in Haste. I really, really like these. And then afterwards, the condition of this book is like gorgeous. And as you can see, I'm using my towers as a desk to really showcase off my books. Then we move into the next section where I like to show you my Celeste Bradley books. So Celeste Bradley is an author that I literally only read two books of. But I absolutely loved and I couldn't get enough of it. So I collected all her books and then proceeded to ignore them. So she is definitely an author that I want to try out more. Then we got Sophie Barnes novels. So Sophie Barnes is someone that I haven't read before. But what can I say? What I can say about her books is that her covers are always like really pretty and I just really like the style of it so that's why I collect her books as well and then we have some books that are actually slipped in like this so I'm clearly a type B person um I don't think any of my friends do this with their books where they like just slip things whenever they want to slip it into so this is actually the book that I'm reading right now currently it's A Groom of One's Own from Maya Rodell. Really liking it so far. And if I wasn't filming this video, I would be totally listening to the audiobook of it. Then we kind of got like some mismatch of like authors that um, I ran out of space for. So we have Sophie Barnes again, Laura Lee Gerke, Lenora Bell, Eloisa James, Eloisa James. We have Megan Frampton, which is another author that I want to try out. Lorraine Heath, the series that I haven't read yet that I need to read as soon as possible because it sounds so good. Then we also have my Lisa Claypest collection. These books do have step backs, some don't. Then we got some random titles that I pulled out because I wanted to read them, but then I didn't get a chance to read them, so I didn't read them yet. So now they're just kind of like everywhere. And then also I want to point out that my shelves in the back are actually double stacked. And um, so there's more authors in the back that I haven't gotten a chance to read yet. Um, some of these authors are like some of them are not really on the top of my radar. So that's why they get put in the back. But then some of them are. It's just that I ran out of space. So they have to be unfortunately put into the back and double stacked. Um, so once I find someone rich enough to, you know build me more bookshelves that'd be great so here this is kind of like a fun collection i like to say this is where i kind of put my new releases my new historical romance releases that came out this year so we got some new titles but then we also have like my collections once again i like to group my authors together so i know exactly which books i have of theirs but i also have a shelf now on my goodreads called historical romances i own so then i check that before i buy more books so we got more lorraine heath we got gail callan we got Laura Lee Girk. We got Loretta Chase, her latest novel. We got Suzanne Enoch. We got Eva Lay. We got more Lisa Byrne books. And then we have Vivian Lorette, Eloisa James, Eloisa James, Gail Callan, more Lorraine Heath. I just really find it so satisfying when like all the authors' names just like kind of like line up like that because obviously it's their books. And then we got more there. 
then we kind of get into a section where it's half contemporary half historical romance mostly because I just buy so many mass market paperbacks that there's just not enough room for me on the shelves and I just put them together so we got as you can see Anna Harrington an author I really like Olivia Parker we got some entangled romances from St from Stacy Reed and then we have our um, contemporary novels Jenny Holiday um, Vicki Lewis Thompson is another author that I have there and then I also grouped together some time traveling historical romances there too as well. Sometimes I like to group them by subgenres so I know exactly where to find them if I were to look for a time traveling romance. So now I'm standing on my chair. This is the second section that we have here that's on top of my shelves where I have my Kathy Maxwell books. Now Kathy Maxwell is an author that I have read before. Honestly some of her books are like average but their step backs are so gorgeous and they're so pretty so definitely go check those out. Then we have Kat Martin books that I already have and then we have some Lindsay Sands novels and then we have more Julia Quinn novels and other things like that. I want to collect Lindsay Sands because mostly because she writes such a lot of historical romances that I want to give her justice. And then we have my really prized possession of Elizabeth Hoyt books. All of them have step backs except for one. Her, I think this one series is called Maiden Lane series. So pretty. All the step backs are gorgeous. We highly recommend the series too as well. Elizabeth Hoyt, great author. And then we got some Shannon Galen books over there. Those are like some spy romances, like spy historical romances that I'm very interested in. And then these are just actually my contemporary romance shelves that I'm not really going to go too much in detail in, simply because this is a historical romance bookshelf tour. But then also I wanted to show you that from a bird's eye view, these are the towers that are beside me when I'm filming and when I'm working. So we moved on to some other shelves that are behind me when I'm filming. Um, so maybe nobody has seen these before. But this is also where I put my Victoria Alexander books, my Monica McCarty Highlander novels, uh, this Veronica Wolf series that I collected, and then I also have more in the back. And these are just my middle grade young readers novels that I really like simply because they're Asian diversity. That's why I bought them. And then really underneath this nook it are more historical romances that I really need to read. Samantha James, Deborah Mullins, Samantha James again, Amanda Quick, Tracy Ann Warren, just random authors that I picked up. And then these are my YA shelves. And then these are my Harlequin shelves. Kind of like a quick little messy book tour right here. And then as soon as you open my doors, there's actually this small bookshelf that's like a mess right here. These are all the books I have read already or that I haven't read. Um, my Tessa Dare collections there. I could move that somewhere else, but I want to open my door and see it. I have my Mayor Rodell books and then I have like a lot of random historical romances that I want to read or I don't want to read anymore but kind of keep just in case. Those are my K-pop posters that I haven't put up on my wall yet and you can see there's tea and like bulbs here too as well. So it's a mess. So I guess I should show you that I have a small table now and in the background of my recent videos you may have seen a stack of books. Yeah, these are just a stack of books that I recently bought. I just like stacking books near me so it reminds me that I have to read books. So here's a stack. Lots of thrifted books and Jane Eyre. I've recently finished that. Loved it. Okay, so that was a very quick bookshelf tour. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I didn't go title by title pulling out like the covers that I really like the most, the step backs that I really like the most, mostly because that's going to be a very long video and... Um, it's just like something that's not really interesting to me to watch in a bookshelf tour. But if you guys are interested in it, then I can do that. I can do that. Okay, so we're back here and we're going to finally do my wrap up. I know this vlog is a lot of intro and a lot of talking so far, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, as you can tell, we're in a new corner that I don't think a lot of people have seen before, but this is basically the closet. And I actually have a reading chair in my room that I don't really like to sit on. Mostly because it kind of hurts my back when I sit on it for too long. But I also like to have a special place for all my stuffed animals. If you guys are fans of Rilakkuma on Netflix, please hit me up because I need to be friends with you. Friend Lacey always has to like 
see my collection and like see my latest addiction to like buying more of these toys and she's always judging me for it because these toys are not cheap these stuffed animals are just so cute and i love them so much but here's a quick wrap up of all the books that i did read so for this readathon so far not including tonight just in case like tonight i'm like god i just really want to crush another book um i read five books for this readathon which isn't too bad i feel like um typically i would have aimed for at least 10 or maybe 12 something like more than a book a day but it's okay it's all over now we're gonna move on so the first book that i did read for this readathon is actually a mix of contemporary and historical romance this one has just been released in 2020 this one's called jane in love by rachel gibney this one is literally about jane austen who is about to get engaged to a man in her olden times and then she somehow magically time travels into the future and she lands herself in london in this like kind of like stage production for the stage production of one of the books that jane Austen wrote so then um, she kind of fits in perfectly mostly because she talks the same way as those actors do and she also dresses the same way and then this is also a book about her falling in love with someone in the present time and how she's gonna kind of overcome it when she has to eventually move back and go back into the olden times. This also had a really interesting take to it too as well because it kind of followed a secondary story involving one of the actresses and how they were doing and how they were going to perform and move into stardom so I found it kind of interesting but honestly like I'm a huge fan of Jane Austen now because I've read a lot of Jane Austen novels that I haven't talked about yet on this channel so I was really interested in reading this book but this one kind of read more like women's fiction as opposed to like romance romance so this one I still gave it only a three out of five stars mostly because it was interesting but it wasn't as cute as I thought it would be there's kind of like an enemies to lovers trope to it too this one's time travel so I consider this a historical romance and if you guys are a fan of time travel definitely check out this book so the next book that I read is a Maya Rodell book so if you guys haven't watched it yet I did a guide to Maya Rodell and she is one of my new favorite historical romance authors kind of want to go back to her older books so that I can see if it's like really good and really juicy so this one is called A Groom of One's Own and I think this might be like the first book she ever published with Avon Romance but I'm not too sure this one follows a girl who has been jilted at the altar and she has been shunned by society because she's labeled as someone who is just kind of like you know damaged goods because people are like why is something's wrong with her that's why like somebody doesn't want to marry her so she kind of like has no marriage prospects anymore so she decides to become an independent woman and become like kind of like a journalist for a gossip column and she makes her own money like that and she supports her own self but what happens is that she kind of crashes into a duke in like the first couple of chapters and, and immediately falls in love with the duke it's kind of like insta love and then but what happens is that our duke is actually engaged to someone else and she is hired to cover the wedding and like to write pieces of the wedding in the gossip column and in the newspaper so it's about these two people who really like each other but can't be with each other because the duke has his own responsibilities he signed a marriage contract so he can't get away from marrying his intended fiance and she can't really like date a married man because she has morals and she has like her own ethics and then this one also followed a second love like a second romance storyline too so it's kind of like two romances in one where our duke's fiance falls in love with another guy and we kind of see alternating chapters between this main couple's romance and the second couple's romance which was really interesting and really cool too most because i normally don't see that in historical romance this one had a lot of angst in it and it had like a lot of drama mostly because you just see that these two couples can't be with each other and they're kind of like star-crossed lovers and they're trying to really find a way to really make it work and make it happen so it was juicy in that sense however it did get repetitive mostly because they were just kind of like i want to be with you but i can't be with you i want to be with you but i can't be with you and then them making like continuous mistakes to make it harder for them to like let go of each other so that was kind of frustrating and then i also didn't like the fact that our main heroine was kind of lusting over someone who's engaged i just felt like you know like that's not for me like I don't like that because I feel like you know even though you like someone really like a lot like I wouldn't put myself in that position to like you know wreck someone's engagement even though like he doesn't love her and she doesn't love him like I just feel like that's just too iffy for me and like you know somebody needs to get their act together um at some point so this one was just a three out of five stars for me too as well mostly because it was really good in the beginning but then you know my own morals and ethics sunk in and then that's why i didn't really like this book 
Also, I feel like that this book reminds me a lot like The Wedding Planner with Jennifer Lopez and Matthew McConaughey, mostly because it's like the same relationship dynamic. So it was like really good in that sense. So I would still recommend you to check this book out even though I personally only gave it three out of five, I still think it's worth it. So the next book that I picked up is another Maya Rodell novel. This one's part of her The Gilded Age Girls Club series, which is her kind of her latest series that she's written. This one's called Duchess by Design. And this is someone that, this is a book that I would recommend to you if you really like fashion, if you really like Project Runway, if you really like, I don't know, like any of those design shows, then I think you'll just really like this book, mostly because they spend so much time going over the dressmaking and like the descriptions of the dress and the fashion and like why women want to dress you know nicer and why women spend money on fashion and like how they want to express themselves back in the day mostly because they couldn't write like they couldn't really express themselves properly because they have to be a lady and then you know how they can't vote and things like that so they express themselves through fashion and I think that was really interesting take on this so this one is about a girl who is a dressmaker she is like a commoner in a sense she doesn't come from like a vast wealth of money she literally like sews dresses for like this designer but then she decides to make her own designs under like the designer's eyes and the designer doesn't like that mostly because like the designer is very like strict and follows her own conventions and then somehow she breaks her way out of the clutches of that dressmaker and she opens up her own shop but before that she kind of bumps into a duke and she falls in love with the duke but what happens is that the duke actually came from england to New York City where she is based off so that he can find a rich heiress mostly because his dukedom is falling apart and he doesn't have money anymore so he needs to marry rich and so he thought that she was rich so that's why he kind of started courting her but then he quickly realizes that she is not an heiress and that she is actually you know like a commoner and then this is how they have to kind of overcome this difference and overcome like the initial need of why um, he was even like courting her in the first place which is for money and then to decide like if he needs if he wants love more or if he wants money more and it's also about her financial independence too as well because she doesn't like to be tied down to a man because she wants to be independent because that's how her life was throughout her whole entire life independence so she doesn't want to give that up so this one i gave it three out of five stars too it was a really great interesting book in the feminist take and it also talked a lot about fashion which i kind of enjoyed mostly because like it's interesting it's different but then also at the same time I'm not really into fashion a lot of the times. So, like I don't really get it. And then afterwards, so like I don't really care for it. So that's why this was only a three out of five stars. It was cute, but it wasn't that cute in my opinion. So the next book that I read was a Sophie Jordan novel. So this one has been recommended to me from Brie from Brie Hill on booktube. So this one's called The Virgin and the Rogue. This one's part of the Rogue File series. Now I've said this a lot in with my conversations with my friends that I really like Sophie Jordan and that I like her books but for some reason I go back like my lasting impression of her is that I really enjoy her books but then when I go back and I review my ratings for it on Goodreads I realize that like I don't give it like that high like I never gave her a five stars out of five stars it was mostly like four or three stars so I don't know why I feel like that she's a really good author but I feel like I like her a lot most Mostly because she's really good at writing chemistry between two characters like you can actually feel the sexual tension you can feel how intense these characters are and you can feel them like that they are perfect soulmates for each other so those are really great elements to have in your historical romance so I think that's why I really like her but like plot wise and character development wise like I don't feel like she's like the best and she's like better than like other authors that I've written and recommended to you on this channel. So this one is actually follows a weird trope. Well, it doesn't follow a weird trope. It follows a weird storyline where our female character has menstrual cycle pains and then her sister who is like kind of like this this doctor kind of thing like that makes like medicines and things like that gives her a prescription to you know relieve the cramps and relieve the pain but then what happens is that that prescription turns into be like a love potion which is like an aphrodisiac that makes her kind of like in heat and she is like severely distressed from it because it was such a heavy dosage that she ends up making kind of like a compromising position with herself with our Duke who is kind of there and I think he's the brother of her intended that she's supposed to marry 
So then afterwards, he's like fighting with like his attraction for her because he's like, I can't mess this up for my brother. But also at the same time, I really like her. And then she herself is kind of like blaming it on the love potion. And that's why she's like in love with him and also very infatuated with him and his body. But in reality, like it's not really like the love potion. It's really just her and her figuring out her own body and her own emotions. So with that being said, like the plot isn't really that much, like it's really just that. So there wasn't really much to it. There wasn't really much substance. There wasn't really much character development in my opinion. I don't really see like much of another layer to it. So then that's why I only gave this one a two out of five stars, mostly because the plot, like the original plot of like this love potion was already wacky enough that I had to extend my belief and that I just... I just couldn't get myself into it. So that's why I gave this two out of five stars, which is really interesting because like I usually give her a higher rating, but then Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers gave this one a high rating when she used to give it low ratings for Sophie Jordan. And then I gave this one a low rating when she gives a high. So you know what? you know, we're on brand for being opposites of each other. So I guess like the final book that I have to wrap up is our group read, which is A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. This is my first Joanna Shoup novel. So I crossed a lot of squares off our bingo board because I was like trying to reevaluate myself to see if I actually like won bingo and did not win bingo. But this one is about a girl who needs to marry someone fast to like help the reputation of her family. And then they kind of like make a suit for her where she has to marry someone, but she like freaking does not like him. Like she's like, like I, he is gross. So she turns to the help of her neighbor who is very dark and mysterious and very quiet and reclusive. And then afterwards she um, ends up realizing that he is actually deaf and that he is someone different than what it seems and that he's very smart and he's very intelligent he makes inventions that could help the people who are deaf like him and they kind of have this like secret communication process where they share notes with each other and this is kind of their romance and this is how they're blossoming with each other now with that being said um this one's okay for me like honestly like that's why i also feel like i failed this readathon because most of my reads were all three out of five star reads or two out of five stars if i particularly hated it it was like i didn't hate it i didn't love it it's like i just don't know how to describe it so this one it was just like a very average book for me i didn't hate it i didn't love it there's really nothing much for me to say about it so i'm sure like my co-hosts and also i've seen a lot of people who tag me on instagram love this book and gave it like a four out of five stars or a five out of five so i'm really happy for you guys for enjoying this book but i think i'm just in a historical romance reading slump and then the book that i'm currently reading right now is actually this lorraine heath novel mostly because lorraine talked a lot about this series in our live and she like basically sold me on it and i was like i have to read this series but also like my historical romance reading slump is just like you're not reading anything right now you are not so this one's called beyond scandal and desire and from the start of it i'm only on chapter two but this one is about basically a Ill illegitimate heir um to like the dukedom it was handed off to like kind of like this like commoner woman when he was just a baby so he kind of grew up in like the dumps but then he kind of raised himself and became a successful businessman and now he's deciding that he wants to ruin the dukedom by trying to seduce the duke the duke's uh son legitimate son's fiance and then this is like their love story so like i said lorraine heath literally writes like really juicy tales so i'm excited to read this one anyways that is it for this historical romance reading vlog i talked a lot like there's right now there's like 20 minutes of footage so hopefully you guys enjoyed this vlog um i know that my vlogs don't perform that well as compared to like my other videos like my recommendation videos and my book hauls and like my wacky videos where I talk about like how I read 600 books in like one year. Um, so I'm totally okay with that because like then that means I could be super even more weird and then like only the people who watch my video can know that I'm super weird. So that it's like our little secret that like you know I'm not normal and that like I'm a freaking weirdo and you guys subscribe to this channel. But anyways that is it. 
for this reading vlog and also for this readathon. Thank you so much to everyone who has joined us and who has participated with us, who has talked to us, who has tagged us. There has been so many people who have joined this readathon that it shocks me and amazes me that so many people wanted to you know partake in this and that like you know do something with my best friends so thank you so much i'm gonna catch up on the reading vlogs and like the historical romance vlogs and videos that i see on booktube that are floating around everybody who's tagging us on instagram amazing and also people using our hashtag hr readathon on instagram amazing we surpassed 500 posts in that hashtag since we last started last year which i think it's like crazy that people are actually taking pictures of books and tagging us and participating in this readathon so once again thank you so much hopefully you guys enjoyed it and we'll bring more readathons to you in the near future okay anyways i'll see you guys again bye <laughs>